I'm, the average person thinks of themselves as good, mm -hmm. right? But what's the appeal of listening to the opposite, you're right, of who you want to be and what you would actually respect in real life? Man, you know what you said that me and Ye be having that conversation about, he be like, man, people be like, man, fuck your bitch, fuck your bitch. And we be like, man, we kind of actually like you with your lady. We think y'all look nice together. Yeah. It's like, I don't want to come and interfere with that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But that's the, you know, the mindset of the, you know, rappers is just like, I mean, I, I think it's real talk. I think it's, it, it, it's, it's some on the label too. Right. It's the, appealing to that lower nature, that yeah. lowest, lowest self. Yeah, I mean, it, self, it's really yeah. no other way to put it besides, you know, we're going to appeal to your lowest self. The 19 keys is a high level Tap in with the dog. Peace family, 19 Keys tapping in with another high level conversation. Today I'm here with a very special, powerful, you understand me, um, how would you describe this brother? He, he, he is the ghost of the culture, you understand me? I like to think about things in algorithms, right? That if you take a person out the algorithm, what exists without them? And in the algorithm of hip hop, Without the good brother Psy High, there would not be so many of your greatest notable verses. You understand me? Um, some of the, 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 the rappers and the hit songs that they have just simply would not exist. They would just vanish and disappear, right? And I think that that's the way that you can know the person legacy, because legacy is the assets that you leave behind, but also the people that you impact and the lives that they come across. Yes. And this is a very powerful brother whose brain is used by other people, you understand me, to create more culture and to create more success and more vibration. And this person is, has been known as one of the greatest ghostwriters ever, ever, right? And I think that there's something to note about the idea of ghostwriting because when we think about hip hop, hip hop is the only, I think, um, genre where the rapper gets credit for everything, mm -hmm. right? Not the producer, not the writers, mm -hmm. you understand me? None of the people around it, it's just the face, right? right? Where an R&B artist, you don't expect them to be a writer, it's more so how they actually sing it, right? And to be able to create the hit. But the people behind the magic should get just as much credit, right, for the magic itself. Mm -hmm. So today we are here with the GOAT, who is now working on EGOAT. You understand mm. me? His new album, mm -hmm. the first rapper on High Level Conversation, so you know mm. it's about to be amazing. Absolutely. Desai High the Prince. My God. Blessings. Blessings, man. God. Blessings. How yes. we feeling today, man? I'm good, man. Blessed, man. Uh, I've been received very well. You know, I took took some time off, but you know, when you leave that impact, people still, you know, is yeah. seeking that knowledge, seeking that feeling, seeking that emotion in music. So. I feel like it's time for me to come to the forefront, take the mask off, you know what I'm saying, from yeah. the ghosts, and you know, let them know who is who it really is behind yeah. the music. The and, flesh. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It goes absolutely. from the ghost to the flesh, the man himself, because I think that I think that the beauty of it is is that, you know, people start to look at you for your brain power. Mm -hmm. Like how does because when you think about hits, right, a person can live their whole career off one hit. Mm -hmm. You understand me? So the ability to be able to consistently comprise hits mm -hmm. and to have an understanding on the fabric of what it takes to make it, that's an intuitive understanding. Mm -hmm. What do you acknowledge within yourself of your ability to be able to sometimes put yourself in other people's shoes and create, you know, uh, from their voice, but even better than they can think of within that moment? Well, it's something that... Uh... It started a long time ago. Um, I wasn't a very good reader growing up, so I felt like um, I needed something that could kind of like catch me up with all my yeah. peers. Uh, I always was looked down upon. I was the thing like when I would act up in class, the teacher would be like, "Well, read this." Yeah. And you know, I would read slow, and they'd be laughing. But what I started doing was, you know, using a lot of the words I was learning in school, putting it in my raps, and going to do like battle raps and different things for different people. So I think that's what kind of started to naturate my, my writing and, you know, me taking a liking to just being a, a, a writer. And um, I think once I got into the music industry, I was going through a lot of things as far as business wise in the music industry, as well as the streets that I couldn't really put myself in the forefront. So I took a role of being behind the scenes mm -hmm. and you know cultivating a lot of these records and 
I think that's what uh, kind of gained my uh, notoriety in that field. And um, other than that, it's just being, being a great listener, understanding what the artists want to get across, what they want to convey to their fans. A lot of times the things that I would like to say, they may not be ready to, you know, articulate that. Right. Or their fans might not be ready to receive it. So I try to like, you know, just stay in the realm of what they want to do, kind of see who they are as a person, get more into in depth to what they thinking and try to, you know, add my expertise to that. And a lot of times it's just coaching. It's not even really writing. It's almost like, oh, say it like right, this. Right, or, right. What if you put ads instead of like, yeah. or, you know, different things like that. And um, other than that, it comes out great because naturally a lot of these artists are talented. They're right. already talented. They already have great voices, uh, great ideas. It's just helping them get across the finish line. She's like a teacher. Yeah, absolutely. You understand me? A, a, a coach, a, a, a rap coach. Yeah, a rap coach. Yeah, yeah, for sure. In the game. For sure. I like that. Um, this episode is brought to you by crowns19.com. What, so, in, in your background, you consider yourself to be a conscious rapper? Um, yeah, I, I would say that because I'm conscious of what I'm saying. Um, but in my, in my life, in my music, I wouldn't even consider it conscious. It's just my life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of how I think of things, um, what's been instilled in me from a young man. Um, I was blessed to have both my parents growing up, so I have that balance that I feel like um, a lot of artists may not be able to have, you know, yeah. I mean, when it comes to speaking on certain things. Mm. So I think that's what I would say. I'm a spiritual rapper, and, and it's in my opinion, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, the no, I like that better because conscious you know, number one, it has a stigma. Like, mm -hmm. you know, people kind of uh, looked at consciousness for a long time as, you know, quote unquote weak. Right, you right. You understand me? Like, it, it is void of real power because. You know, we perceive, you know, murdering and killing and violence against each other. Mm -hmm. You know, um, others being at our peak, mm -hmm. you understand me? It's like top-notch warriors, mm -hmm. right? But you know, the highest level of masculinity is really once you in your scholarship, mm -hmm. you understand me? And you're a critical thinker and you're an intellectual, right? Um, and because that represents a man utilizing his mind, mm -hmm. right? And we got it backwards in culture a lot of times on what we, should look up to, right? Because we end up idolizing the very things that kill us, mm -hmm. right? So in, in your estimate for, you know, you've been around all of the greatest rappers that are known today in their field as the most popular and successful ones. What do you think the state of the mindset that's behind most rappers? Is it, you know, they are intentionally putting out this music or is it just, well, you know, this is what sells, so I'm gonna put it out right or that's just who they are so they express who they are in reflection of where they come from well i think a lot of times um in the entertainment industry trauma sells you know what i mean because a lot of people that are fans of us never get to experience the trauma so it's almost like watching the boys in the hood or watching a you know a terminator or whatever movie yeah. that you thought was action pack and it had the drama yeah, and it yeah, had yeah you know, the hardships of our lives. So I think a lot of times in music, you know, and entertainment and that, I think labels push that narrative mm -hmm. because they feel like people, it's harder for people to kind of uh, experience that if they're not in that environment. Mm. You get what I'm saying? So it's like, it's, it's praised, it's, it's glorified, but from the, on the flip side of it, it's, it's really going on where we're from. Yeah. It's really, things that are destroying our community, destroying the uh, minds of the youth. I was even telling someone like, even when we came up back in my day, we had artists like Nas, Jay-Z's, and they might've been rapping about selling dope, but it still was a masculinity, a, right. some kind of mature businessman vibe that they was giving right. off in the music. It wasn't just- But they were bosses in it yeah. and you know. If it gotta go there, it'll go there. Yeah. But, you know, it was, it was, to me, it was more of integrity rap. Right. You know what I'm saying? I think now it's just- It's demon time. It's demon time, right. <laughs> ain't no, it ain't, you know, it's not about morals, not about respect, mm -hmm. not about integrity, none of that. It's just right. about money. Right, exactly. Right, and, and, and the glorification of me actually, 
you know, being my worst. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Like I'm, I'm like I'm literally somebody who get over you, somebody who keep their words, somebody who run off on you, somebody who fuck your woman. Right. Like in all the aspects of the most slime ball shit you could think of, <laughs> this is what I'm about to put out there. Right. right. And, and that gotta really say something, cause I mean, I'm, I'm, the average person thinks of themselves as good, mm -hmm. right? But what's the appeal of listening to the opposite? You're right of who you want to be and what you would actually respect in real life. Man, you know what you said that me and Ye be having that conversation about. He be like, man, people be like, man, fuck your bitch, fuck your bitch. And we be like, man, we kind of actually like you with your lady. We <laughs> think y'all look nice together. Yeah. It's like I don't want to <laughs> come and interfere with that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But that's the you know the mindset of the you know rappers is just like. I mean, I, I think it's real talk. I think it's it, it, it's. It's some on the label too, right? Because appealing to that lower nature, yeah. lowest, lowest self. I yeah, mean, it, it's self, really yeah. no other way to put it besides, you know, we go appeal to your lowest self, the right. lowest common denominator. Mm -hmm. The, you know, uh, and, and it gets me to a thought process because it's like, I think I heard Meek Mills or somebody. Uh, it might have been YG on mm -hmm. Earn Your Leisure talking about how albums are broken into and how records are broken into, and so it had me thinking like, you know. For the most part, the rappers that are seen as the greatest today and the ones that's getting all the airtime people listen to the most is because there's money behind them, mm -hmm. which is the record labels. Mm -hmm. Not because that's the greatest. Right, right. Not because if you put them against 10 random rappers that are good out there, mm -hmm. you're going to be like, man, this was, it was the rawest. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. It's just because it trains our ear to compare whackness against whackness. Right, right. You understand me? And right. we listen to it the most and be like, damn, out of this white shit, this flow slide. No, I ain't gonna lie. Mm -hmm. But when you really, if you open up the plethora of music, you'd be like, damn, in comparison, this is probably the lowest music that's out there. Right, right, right. <laughs> but it got the most money. It's, right. like a, it's like a campaign, a, a politician that got the most money backing them for the most part wins. Well, you know, a really from, from this side of, of it, the really reason why uh, labels do that because they don't want to make too many black billionaires. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Talk so to you, me then. So you got guys like Jay-Z, uh, you know, your Puffies, your Dr. Dre's. Those were guys who was really you know, putting their minds into the music, into the business. So they can level up and now they can articulate themselves around other billionaires and other multimillionaires and then they become one themselves. Right, right. But I think now they don't they don't want our artists to think that far. Right. Because they lose control of them. Do you think it's too late though? Because what I've seen is a lot of artists you know, smartening up about their ways of business. Like, mm -hmm. music has become more of a business than an art form now. Mm -hmm. Like, when people think about creating hits, like, they study more the science of what's gonna make me a hit real quick. Right. So therefore, it's not about longevity. It's like, if I can get this hit, I can tour, I can make some money, I can do merch around it, right? I get a look. Mm -hmm. So, but, you know, back in the day, it was more so about people really understanding the art form of music mm -hmm. and going to record stores and like finding samples and like studying music and figuring out ways they can twist their voice and tonality and lyrics and analogies. But now it's more so, about, and it's a certain level of intelligence that these young rappers have nowadays that's different when they could make a hit off like just a, a tone, just, right. just off saying something a certain way, but not saying nothing at all. Well, <laughs> I feel like now it's a cap on it though. like. Because as you see, they yeah to make you money, but they gonna put a ceiling on it because you're gonna end up getting killed. Mm. You're gonna end up going to prison, i.e. what's going on That's a in my city right now. So it's like, yeah, we'll let you be successful. Yeah, it's microwave. It, yeah, it's like, but it's only gonna be a ceiling versus, you know, how Jay-Z could be a chameleon and been able was able to go and put a suit on yeah. and go into them rooms and still be his be a businessman outside of rap. You know what I mean? So that, that, that gets me thinking. So when you think about the brand, so Jay-Z started off with, you know, the big T's, money, Cristal popping, but at a certain point in time, mm -hmm. they did throw on the suits. Mm -hmm. And then they throw on the art, they throw on the culture and all these things, but it gives your brand all these different outlets. Mm -hmm. But the new younger rappers never throw on any suits or never throw on anything besides one persona. Exactly. So it only gives them one window to do business through. Exactly. You understand me? Because we only see you one way, so we're only going to deal with you one way. In that one way, yeah. Anything outside this, you tripping. Right. <laughs> 50 million is your, is your zenith. Yeah. You know what I mean? Anything above that, you got to, you got to rub shoulders with people that are you know, 
in different worlds that you don't scare, you don't terrify, you know, because we already right. look like we look, we already powerful beings. So I think that's a, a big thing in, in rap where we have to grow. I think it, there's no growth in it. It's like, mm. we're still selling the same stage one message, stage right. one message. And I think, you know, what we have to do is be able to go to those next levels of thinking to be able to reach a different demographics of people, but also move the culture in a different direction. Cause it's a lot of us, it's a lot of, you know, we would say fast food restaurants, Yeah. but there's no, no, no high level chains of food that we're getting outside of your, you know, your Coles or your, right. your Kendrick. What you think about Kendrick last album? Oh man, I think it was amazing. Um, I think Kendrick always pushes the envelope on, on all levels, as far as visually, as far as art, as far as, um, you know, his concepts and what he's talking about, what he's reaching. And I think it's good for the culture, especially when it trickles down to artists like me, who can take a little bit of that information and like articulate it to, I look at it like the ghetto. Yeah. Because sometimes Kendrick can be over your head, you know what yeah, I mean? And yeah. I try to like make sure I hit him right in the chest and let them understand, like in layman's terms, this is what he's trying to convey yeah. to you. You know, Kendrick was his album was definitely a high level conversation. Yeah, it's definitely <laughs> high level conversation. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> it was like when I first listened to it, or the, I was able to listen to it fully through. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it was like listening to somebody like vent, mm -hmm. right? And then afterwards, it's like it left you with a lot of heavy stuff on you, mm -hmm. right? So it's like you got to wait a few moments before you go back in and listen to that whole album again because it's like you get a friend that's telling you all their problems issues and they ain't talked to you in a while right right, right? right. and it's like damn that was a lot man you know what let me go listen to some trap music and come <laughs> right, back right, <laughs> right. let me digest i that. need to jump in and out of this but and not to cut you off i think what's beautiful about that i would love for you to be able like me when i look at you bro i would love for you to go sit down with like a kodak yeah i would i would love to you know what too. i mean because when i heard his voice on there I think he's 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 yearning for that that information. I think you know? Kodak he um I think he uh he said that he read my brother Supreme Understanding book, mm. which was a very high level conscious book, and he reads books. Mm -hmm. Like when I listen to certain rappers, regardless of what level they are, I can see and hear what level of intelligence that they have. Right, right. Because sometimes it takes a high level of intelligence to play dumb, right? Mm -hmm. Like a certain level of dumb where it's like. I know the sound that y'all want. I still get to say everything I want to say, but I can throw in bits of my intelligence, but mm -hmm. only for those who really understand it will ever be able to pick apart this. Exactly. And what that's doing is sending a signal to everybody else, like, I'm not really stupid. I'm playing stupid for the world. Right, right. And I think Kodak is one of the ones, you know, um, and, and, and like my platform, I think, will allow people to have a safe space to, to showcase their intelligence and be loved for that as well. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Like, I think the thing about our culture is, it's like, I ask people all the time, who's the smartest black man in the world? Right? Mm -hmm. We don't have a reference for that at all. Like, nothing pops up. There's no top five or top 10 asking who the smartest white man, boom. Right. You got about five, 10 picks. Right. So, like, intelligence is not a, a, a measurement of value in the culture yet. Mm -hmm. So, therefore, we don't look to be intelligent to be like, all right, this is the way I can get my brand. This is the way I can get love. This is the way I can get looks. Right? Because even when issue happens that require the most intelligent people to solve, we bring the most popular people to talk about. Right, right, exactly, <laughs> so, exactly. So, therefore, it's like, why would I show y'all intelligence when the dummies win and everything? Right. You know, right. like, it, it brings me no value to do that. So you got to create a culture around intellect, mm -hmm. right? And then they be like, okay, now I got to decide, I read this book for this, or I had this thought process that nobody wants to hear mm -hmm. because it allows me, to, it, it detaches me from the street culture. Right. Because nobody told us that the guys that were running the streets were the smartest ones. Mm -hmm. You understand me? The ones that's crashing and the crash dummies going to jail, those were the goons. Those were the ones sent out by the bosses. Those mm -hmm. weren't the ones that was running it. Right. You right. know what I mean? Those ones getting paid. <laughs> the, the guys who did, and, 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 and so it's like, we honor failure in the streets more than success. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of the guys who get, you know, getting locked up means you got caught. Right. Right. And but when, <laughs> when we think about yeah. getting locked up, that's a badge of honor that you was in the streets. It, there's plenty of people that's in the streets that didn't get, get caught. caught. And a lot of times they were smart enough to move on and take that money, invest it into a different venture. Mm -hmm. And so it's like there's a cap on 
the graduation point of the streets. Uh -huh. Like you, the streets think about it as you never supposed to graduate from here. Right. And Pac said it best. He's like, I got thug life chatting on my chest, but you know, it's like high school. Once you get a diploma, you can still go to college, but you still went through high school. You still got the diploma forever. Right. So I'm gonna always be thug life, but I gotta graduate. Exactly. But rappers don't think of it in that capacity, or at least outwardly push that to the world. Yeah, and, and we need more guys like me and you that, that actually push that narrative because, yeah. I mean, that's the only thing. It's like we say trap because we are actually trapped. Yeah, it's and, not a good thing. And a lot of times it comes with our significant others as well. Like the women have to make sure they set a precedent of, man, these are the type of high level men we're looking for. Because right. a lot of times that's what they do it for. Yeah. You know what I mean? But, you know, it's, it's, it's something that, I really feel like we have to work on as a people because it's it's eerie when you think about it. You know, how we just, I always say we have this imaginary, uh, it's like this racism line, this race line where I say, we don't want to leave the hood because we feel like, oh man, them white people over there are racist. Yeah. And them white people don't want to come over here. Yeah. And they feel like it's dangerous over there. Right. So it's like this fence that, we stay in our, you know, yeah. in our thing and they stay over there. But I think the higher level thing of what I start learning in music is, you know, we all as people come from the motherland. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Fact. I mean, the melanin level of us may be different, but, you know, I, even when you see like, I be a little jealous when I see like no disrespect to any of the school shootings or the kids at the borders and everything, but they get so much publicity. And from our culture, we'd be like, yeah. man, save the kids, save the kids. But then you would imagine nothing is happening in the hood. Yeah, in the hood. Yeah, it'd be like when something happened to us, like you don't see nobody showing up. I, I, I think that's why, like, like <laughs> I don't, I don't overly go push out them narratives no more because it's like, bro, if, if we're going to have that much empathy, and and, and rightfully so as human beings, mm -hmm. but it's that it's the media that controls our emotions mm -hmm. because in the reality of it is, growing up in. I was born in St. Louis, raised in Oakland, mm. right? Them is two bad environments. Right. You understand me? When I go back and forth between mom and pops, I ain't get no breaks. Right, 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 <laughs> exactly. exactly. So when I think about that, it's like, I can imagine there's death happening in St. Louis at some of the highest rates, mm -hmm. got some of the lowest quality of living. Same thing happening in Oakland. Mm -hmm. What makes the death that happens in one area because the news blasts it more mm -hmm. tragic than death that happens in the other area? Absolutely. Right? Mm -hmm. And when we do that, I think that we desensitize and we importantize everybody else's community and what the new curates to us to tell us what's important. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's like, number one, there's good news and bad news always happening in the world. Mm -hmm. if, if America can send $140 billion to Ukraine mm -hmm. to fight their war, to help them in their territories for their kids being killed and murdered, mm -hmm. then they can send $140 billion to the hoods of America to create projects to help us. Right. In a snap of a finger, in a snap of we a didn't. Finger. They had to, We didn't vote for that money. We didn't do any of those things. There was no consensus to the people that say overwhelmingly, let's send them 140 billion dollars versus, or, or, how about we send that money to, you know, all of the hoods in America? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wouldn't that equal things out? That would actually help with the racial tension because mm -hmm. black people would feel like, okay, we finally getting something. Yeah. Right. But. They want these things to happen on lower levels. Mm -hmm. You understand me? And I think that, you know, when you got celebrities, for the most part, who are very vocal, because they PR team tell them it's gonna be a good look, mm -hmm. you know, speak about this, mm -hmm. right? And they talk about certain things, but they leave out platforms that add solutions or don't talk about things that's happening in their own backyard and community. Right. That's why they get hated and killed in their own hoods a lot of times. And, and, and that's not to say that it can't happen vice versa, even if you do, because we've seen that happen with Nipsey Hussle, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. But the reality of it is, is that when you don't advocate for the people, the people don't advocate for you. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, that's, and that's important for us. It's, uh, you know, I, even when I was looking at, like, the pandemic, how much money they had to give away in the pandemic, I was like, man, it could have gave us this a long time. <laughs> Bro, the solutions are not that hard to it solve. Ain't. All our issues are money problems. Yeah, absolutely. Opportunity problems, you know. Bro, we got a hundred, we got, if you take, if nobody ever took a few billion dollars in and said, let's go build free mental health centers and facilities within mm -hmm. the hood. Let's figure out relocation programs and, and let's study, because mm -hmm. we've been studied, but not to help us. 
we've been studied to create uh, to us to become better consumers mm. and become prisoners. But uh, there's to, no to billion dollar studies to help us. To say something super important to that, um, when you said something about Nipsey, rest in peace. Yeah. The powerful thing I think people missed from Nipsey was his, his shooter, the guy who killed him, mm -hmm. turned himself in at an insane or mental hospital. Mm. The lawyer that they were going to use was threatened by his gang, Nipsey's gang, that he couldn't represent mm -hmm. the other guy, the shooter. In it. But what that guy was trying to do was get a case big enough mm. to recognize mental health and all these guys who got PTSD from losing friends, from gang banging, from these poor neighborhoods. And now we have a reference for every other murder or case that comes along. And mm. I think we kind of missed that with the, I think Nipsey kind of was like, am I the sacrificial lamb for mental health? And, you know, bringing the community together because if you look at it, it's like, all right, this man did that to Nip, a high profile, uh, artists. Now when we have young brothers who are beefing or going through whatever they're going through, now we can say, well, in the case of Nipsey Hussle, this man may be mentally mm. challenged. You know, I mean, he may, you know, been through things with mom, abuse, you know, same thing with um, R. Kelly. I, I, I say it all the time, like, R. Kelly, it has to be a way where we don't glorify him, but we put him somewhere where we study him. Mm. Because if you can do that and make it a, a easier transition, now you can make other pedophiles or other men who are going through that same mental disruption to come and turn themselves in and say, I need help. But when you punish them, it's like, oh, I got to hide this mental illness. And it still perpetuates throughout the community. So a lot of times I think what we have to do, especially in our own community, form these governments, form our own, you know, like I said, uh, we're supposed to be our own nations and have our own armies and different things and provide these things for ourselves and our successful brothers like, you know, our LeBron James and, you know, our, our rappers and things. We should adopt a lot of these communities, adopt a lot of these uh, uh, institutions that we need to imply. Um, I always say that KD should be the funder for Jackson State. Uh, LeBron should have a fam you, you know, being those. Yeah. You know, those help with, institutions. Yeah, to really be able to bring these things to the forefront for our community to be able to mm. really cha make a change. So that's a very, very high level view and perspective on both mm -hmm. the situations that you brought up. Because mm -hmm. immediately, as a people, we want vengeance. Right. Right. In the case of Nipsey also, the streets want street vengeance. Mm -hmm. Now, what you talked about was utilizing it as a symbol for something higher than the moment and the emotion of vengeance, right? right? And that right. feeling and that need to be able to help and save others. Because the one thing about the hood is, yes, everybody who's got a loved one that died in the streets got PTSD. Mm -hmm. You done been shot at, you done had people that died. You understand me? You may have went and committed a crime or shot at somebody. Like mm -hmm. all of these things breed PTSD, right. breed survivor remorse. But there right. is no real mental health ways to look at this. And it needs to be, number one, a black school of psychology that comes out of it, mm. that has an understanding. Because I always say that Freud and measurement don't fit us, wow. right? That Freud and scale was for white men specifically, not even white women, mm. just white men, mm -hmm. right? So we utilize a lot of their models of psychology to try to fix us. Mm. But we don't have issues who want to have sex with our mother, mm -hmm. right? We don't have those same things. <laughs> right. We don't fit those models. Right, right. So it's like when you learn that in school, everybody looks sideways like, that ain't make sense. That's, that's what y'all go off of. That's right, y'all right. skills. But we measure spirit, right? right? Higher consciousness meets fashion, meets design, meets a representation of your higher self. How do you actually earn your crown? You gotta have some knowledge yourself. You have to be actively working on the path, consistently doing something great in your life, right? Now, you don't have to be a billionaire. You don't have to be a celebrity. I know I've crowned many people throughout my time, but it's more so about you recognizing who you are and you having something that connects to that in your everyday fashion, in your everyday style. You've never seen me without my crown. 
Why? Because it represents who I am and I want that to communicate every single time I walk outside. The sun, moon, and stars representing freedom, justice, equality, and enlightenment, representing truth, and a universal mind tapped in to the frequency of higher consciousness and purpose. If you want to represent those same standards at a higher level, and you want to have something that you can adore that represents your rulership in this universe, make sure you tap in and go to Crowns 19 and crown yourself. I'm 19 Keys, the designer of crowns, and I want to see you get crowned. It's like when you talk about, you know, uh, 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 spirituality or spiritology, what they got when they went to ancient Kemet and they seen them studying psychology, what well, they didn't believe in or studying spirituality and psychology, they didn't believe in the spirit. Right. So they said, no, we're going to take the psyche and the ology aspect, study the mind only and then utilize that as a base mm. to understand ourselves. Right. So they took our knowledge to understand them. But then. We are very spiritual people with everything that we do. Right. We're very much into our rhythm and our vibrations and our soul and our spirit. Mm -hmm. That's why hip hop translates so well because we can communicate the same thing as another community could, but with spirit in it. Right. And that's what makes it real. Mm -hmm. So when we look in the hoods, when you're dealing with mental health, you got to deal with the spiritual health as well. Right. And having a way for people to to grade their spiritual health. Cause a man can be like, no, I'm straight right now. I'm focused, I'm just do what I want to do. But there's something wrong with your spirit. And you've never even acknowledged the issues that go on because your spirit can have, you know, things attached to them based on what you went through. You kill somebody, that flash of murder exists within you. Right. You rob somebody, that feeling of being an immoral being exists within you. You yes. treat somebody the wrong way, like your spirit is in balance now forever. And you got to figure out a way to correct that. But society has no tools and resources. So yes. black men are walking around with PTSD. They can't sleep, got insomnia. Mm -hmm. You understand me? They're not eating the right foods, not in the right environments, listening to the wrong music. So everything about your environment is engulfed in death and engulfed in unhealthy behavior. Exactly. So the way you take that out on somebody else, what that gonna look like? A demon. Right. So we call it demon time. time. Right. And the little kids was really trying to let you know what's wrong with them. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. didn't went, the, they done, they done went to jail, they didn't got 30 homies that died, they didn't have to kill somebody to survive. Right. They didn't have to rob to survive. When they walk outside, they don't know if they're going to be alive. They homie done cheated them, right. yeah, tried to rob mm -hmm. them. Like, bruh, now they feel like I got to turn into a demon and survive in hell. Yeah. So Bullying. That's what it, I always say that, um, you know, a lot of times we go through the same thing. Like, you see the mass shooters and different things like that. And a lot of times those kids are bully. But it's like, it's the same way with me. It's yeah. like, should you go home and you can't walk this way home because these group of guys is over right. there. And it's like, right. then you got to get with these group of guys right. to be able to walk home. Right. Now y'all beefing. It's yeah. like, now it turns into a whole thing. So, I mean. Yeah, it, that bullying is, uh, that word. Yeah. I think you, you got to understand there's levels to it because growing up in the hood, the idea of being bullied was just somebody you got to fight. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Cats walking down the street asking you where you from or trying to test you and right. they send a little brother to fight you or they want to mm -hmm. fight you. That's just an obstacle you got to get over. Right, right. I know you never looked at it as, oh, they trying to bully me. Right, So right. I'm weak and I'm a victim. It's like, I got to get my heart up. You mm -hmm. understand me? And I got to fight, bro. Otherwise, every time I see him, I got to fight. Right, right. You understand right. me? And I think that, especially in the shooting areas, you know, there's a lot of weird stuff going on around them shootings. You know, I, I, I digress to give my breakdown on what I see in reality. <laughs> right. I mean, you know, it, 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 I, I, we already kind of know it. You know what I'm saying? Like, even with my situation, you know, I was just yeah, at the so wrong place I was gonna at get the wrong into time. That. You know what I'm saying? Let, let me ask you, before you get into the story of it, mm -hmm. why don't you think that your assassination attempt was picked up by more media, more black media specifically? Because until I started mm -hmm. doing my homework, and still studying on you, I had never known that. Mm. I didn't see no black media really cover that. And then that, that seems like a really big right. issue in hip hop. Mm -hmm. Number one, people going at the rappers. But number two, somebody as prominent as yourself that has done so much for the culture, mm -hmm. it never blew up as a huge story. Cause I ain't let it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't gonna be a story. But even if you don't let it though, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, can't, you can't show me 
Somebody mm-hmm. tried to kill Jack Harlow today. Oh, yeah. That's everywhere in the yeah, world, yeah, whether absolutely. he wants I mean, it or not. Yeah. But right? I think with my situation is usually that's not, that's every day in our community. Like, it ain't like you got hit. It ain't like they killed uh, you. But it's you not every saying? day where this, so the story, as I listen to it, if I can tell a part of it, mm-hmm. the story of you being in your nice car, was it a Bentley at the mm-hmm. time? Bentley, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Okay, big Bentley truck. What color was it? Gray. Gray. <laughs> so you riding. Mm-hmm. And guys come up in a Maserati behind you, mm-hmm. right? And they start tracking you, mm-hmm. which means they must have knew your location beforehand, mm-hmm. right? And as you tell the story, you trying to figure out if they trying to rob you, mm-hmm. and it turns out it feels like they're trying to kill you mm-hmm. because their behavior wasn't about somebody trying to take a car on the middle of the highway. It was right. like these guys are really trying to catch me at a point where they can knock me down. Mm-hmm. And so as you tell the whole story, and I, I'll let you tell the rest of the story, but it just goes towards the intention and the why. Right, right. right? And for me, that was the most concerning factor of it. What, what would that headline have been if Cy High the Prince died that day? Oh. Then the culture would have splashed it everywhere. Right, right. Right? Right. So thinking about the intentions of what happened, and I don't know politics or anything mm-hmm. of that nature, but you know, it, 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 it referenced the points every time we see somebody die in our culture, the death becomes huge. Mm-hmm. But the attempts on their life are not as huge. Right, right. The times where, you know, a rappers are harassed or people try to kill them or shoot at them, you know, the, the protection mm-hmm. of people that are prominent voices, people that we celebrate, people that bring us culture. That's not something that we blast out to be like, yo, we got to protect them. Mm-hmm. Afterwards, everybody like, yo, this can't happen no more, man. We got to do something about this. Right, right. But that ain't protection. Protection mm-hmm. is what happens before. Right, after. right, right. Um, well, I think with me, like I said, um, well, the story is, you know, obviously, yes, it was some kind of, you know, from what I got, it was a mistaken identity, you know, mm. because my, you know, I look like, you know, only certain kind of artists in my city got that truck. And some of the guys who do got that truck are in real bad, yeah. you know, beef in my city right now. So a lot of times there'd be so much money on them that a lot of times they are going to just try to hit. And even if it is a mistake, we can't afford for it not to be. Right. If it is the dude we're looking for in the car, uh. it need to be that. And um, I think that's really what it was with me. It was just... And then, the, like I said earlier, I was in the other, another interview, they was like, you reacted like a street dude. And the, when the police said it to me, I'm like, bro, what you mean? Like, once you see somebody, fight, you know, I'm gonna go for my right. joint, you know what I'm saying? It's time to get down, cause I don't know what's going on. I'm just going off, so I'm, now I'm surviving, you know what right. I'm saying? But I think that's the biggest thing is like, being in the shootout or being attempt on your life and rap isn't, in our community, isn't, that extreme. The extreme part is actually losing your life, like a Mo3 or anybody mm. else. They want to look, they wanted to be that before they capture yeah. it because so somebody this is everyday like, life. So like, <laughs> like you say, you don't rap about violence though. You don't rap mm-hmm. about hunting and murdering other black men. So that's why it became extreme to me right, because right. it was like, this is not somebody who actually in the mix of it. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. to kill somebody who not in the mix of it, accident or whatever, mm-hmm. That's a bigger issue than somebody that's in the mix and then they get killed. Mm. Because I see why you got exactly. killed. Right, right. I see what you're you saying. You rap about it. You, you probably done did some shit too. So yeah. it's like, you know, it, 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 to Come quote Malcolm X, that's the chickens coming home the roost. Like if you live that yeah. lifestyle, for me it's like, and I empathize with all sides, but it's mm. like, if I'm in it and I do something to somebody else and somebody get me, mm. that just come with the rules. Right, right, right. right. So that's, and, and we act like that's not what's happening. Like niggas is hunting each other, killing each other. So when niggas get locked up or niggas get killed, unfortunately, that's the reality that you live in. Mm-hmm. Because you can also, you got enough money to move out that. You right, got enough right. money to disappear, go away from it, mm-hmm. protect yourself. And, but you decide to, no, nah, this shit, this is what I'm on. I'm on this type of time. Mm-hmm. So when somebody who, you know, is, is not in the mix of things get caught up in it, then that's when you really get to take a look at the culture and really see how bad it is. Right, like, and, that, and, that's, and that's deep. And, you know, I, I didn't even think about it like that, but I think it comes along, I tell people, it comes along with the black plight. Mm. Like, it don't matter where you at in America, in the world, we're the most sought after dangerous people to outside of us. Yeah. You know what I mean? That goes for 
every race, I tell people that all the time. It's like, don't just think white people don't like you. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're, oh, no. you're we, the, <laughs> trust me, bro. You, you. We, <laughs> we deal with, when it comes to white folks, maybe police and systems is what we deal with and we worry about the, the most. most right? But when it comes to threats of our lives, it's somebody that looks like us that we worry about the most. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Like, theirs is a much bigger thing, like going to prison or like, you know, uh, uh, the predatory issues that we deal with with systematic wh white supremacy mm -hmm. or a police officer, you know, uh, being racist, also being a Klan member. Right. You understand me? But when it comes to immediate threats, mm -hmm. somebody who look at us as a target, we think about somebody that's going to look just like me. Exactly. Grew up in the same type of environment that mm -hmm. treat me as a target mm -hmm. to rob, to kill, right, or just take their anger out on. Mm -hmm. Because we, and that, you know, uh, Dr. Wesley said the word bully, coon, where it was talked about during the times of slavery when the, the big brute slaves would go beat other slaves because they couldn't beat the slave master. You mm. understand me? So, you know, they'd go fight each other and try to brutalize and, and bully each other, mm -hmm. right? Because that was the only time where they had a sense of power. Mm -hmm. But they'd never take that same energy out on the slave Wait, catchers right. Right. and on the slave masters. Right, right. And that's exactly the same field we had today. And when you look at it too, I, I look at it too, like when you see like the Asians in the beauty salon stores, right? You got these bandanas that you see these young boys coming by every day. Yeah. You don't take them out the store. Nope. No, because that's you, when they You know order more and more and Absolutely. More, knowing, so that's, a, that's an enemy in itself as well. If you they know could put a gun store as a corner store, they would. Exactly. But they know that they couldn't. But they will put a liquor store. <laughs> yeah. Right there. Liquor store. Exactly. That's the same way. Yeah. That. So I think, man, it's like, it's an attack on us all the way around the board. That's why I said I had to just take it as... You know, the devil was working that day. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because but God was working hard. God was you working harder. Me? Yeah, absolutely. It, it, it did. <laughs> so it, it was just, it, you know, something that I understood, took it on the chin, but I'm, you know, it opened, it gave me a new life. It gave me, it, it, I kind of looked at it as like, sometimes I was comfortable in my success. Mm. I was comfortable with, you know, I wrote this rock record for this guy, I wrote this record for this guy. Now you can I say the name. Money. You can say you know the name. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I've wrote, written a lot of records, but I think now God was telling me your message is even more impactful, mm. even bigger, because the people that I'm trying to change, I don't feel like Travis Scott will ever reach them. You mm. know what I mean? The guys in the neighborhood that I grew up with, with some of the vicious, most vicious guys. I remember when you said I was, you was born in St. Louis. Yeah. I used to be in St. Louis so much. And it was like, man, I, when I went to St. Louis, it used to be like, bro, I, I don't ever want to come here. Bro, you gotta have, if you, anybody <laughs> go to St. Louis gotta have a story yeah, or something crazy story. that they witnessed happen or done did in St. Louis. Yeah. Like, I don't talk about my past a lot, but when I say Oakland and St. Louis, you have to know being in the mix of things, you gotta get into things. Yes. You understand me? But that gave me perspective to understand everything around the board. Mm -hmm. So I can understand street guys, I understand the killer, I understand the robber, I understand all aspects because I done seen it, I done been a part of it to see that perspective. Mm -hmm. I see the intentions, the why, right. what the story of becoming before it happens. I done seen kids when they was a little innocent, seeing stuff mm -hmm. on the streets and then wanting to get a part of it, start asking questions, can I ride with y'all? Mm -hmm. Then they turn into stealing, then they turn into robbers, then they turn into just straight stone cold murders. Right. Now they got a <laughs> reputation, now right. they somebody. But this was a little seven year old that was just playing you know, kickball playing. with me. <laughs> so it's like when you see those steps of development mm -hmm. and you see that angle and where they went wrong mm -hmm. and they didn't have someone in their life or the dominant environment in their life because mm -hmm. the problem is that they don't have it's not that they don't have nobody mm -hmm. is that the people around them the environment is more pressure than that one person that's saying that no nah, i don't be a part of this that and the third mm -hmm. but the other 30 guys around you like man come on what's happening right. exactly you feel me? Exactly. this is the cool shit. look up to this and, and let's make this happen it's mm -hmm. how you become somebody so you know I, I that's why when i talk about hip-hop i talk about culture you know, I do it from an empathetic place, but mm -hmm. at, at the same time, I'm gonna do it it's like, yo, once we know it, once you, if you listen and you know, you now have the power to change. Right, exactly. Like, that's it. Mm -hmm. Like, so, and, and you can decide and make decisions for yourself to take yourself in and out of environments, in and out of modes, mm -hmm. right? But we decide to put ourselves 
right back into it. Right, right. So speaking of Travis Scott, you wrote for Travis Scott before, right? Yeah, I, I worked with Trav. I worked with a lot of people. Uh, no, Rihanna. wrote, wrote, wrote. Oh, wrote. Yeah, yeah, yeah I yeah. mean, because you know. I know you get tired of hearing all the other wrote <laughs> you know, for this no, person. Yeah, that, but, but I also think that part of your legacy is like you're going to create, and I can't wait to listen to the mm-hmm. album, right? Mm-hmm. But it's like the, uh, the fact that you wrote for a lot of these people is also a part of your catalog. Mm-hmm. And I think that it does you a favor for people to look at the full extension right, of all right, you've done. Right. And, and I think, unfortunately, in hip hop, we feel like it takes away from another person, mm-hmm. but it doesn't. It doesn't. Well, you know, I always look at, when I think of writing for someone, I don't look Bow Wow them like, yo, little Bow Wow, this the ah, rap you drink. Yeah. I came in with this, it's like, no, nah, this is what I want to say. It's the cadence I want to give off. Like, I want to talk about this and that, right. this and that. I just kind of help them make it rhyme. Right. And, and you know but what that's, I mean? So it's there's more a, of a collective. There's an intelligence that goes into being able to put yourself in other people's shoes mm-hmm. and like see things and know how other people go feel them mm-hmm. and being a conduit for that consciousness right right, right? right. during that cypher mm-hmm. and that's really what i'm trying to get to because mm-hmm. there's certain people who have that ability in the world not everybody right, right. there's certain people who have that ability and that to should be put praised. themselves like a tuning fork mm-hmm. to be like yo I can come in and bring the best out of you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's one of my superpowers. Right. That is also a thing in this space. We call it ghostwriter. We need a another yeah, a better writers. word. Yeah, we need co-writers. You understand yeah. me? Because uh, I always say, like, you see Adele go up on stage and receive her Grammy, yeah. and it's 15, 20 people behind her. Right. Well, I want to thank my, <laughs> right. my trumpet player. My, yeah. You know what I mean? But when you're a rapper, you only get to go up there by yourself. Right. And you get your trophy, and it's like you did everything yourself. And I think that's what's wrong with part of our culture in the first place. When mm-hmm. you think about any leaders throughout time, you think about Malcolm X or Martin Luther King or what, whoever, the, the men around them to get no credit. Right. The women around them get no nope. credit. You're right. It's You're always right. lone men right. and, or lone women that were the movement. Right. And that's just 100% Simple. false. It was somebody protecting them, somebody mentoring them, mm-hmm. somebody giving them game, somebody who was probably telling them things to say before speeches, mm-hmm. right, strategies in which we move. And this is why I believe that we don't really appreciate collaboration and unity mm-hmm. because we always represent a lone savior. Right. But it, it ain't a person, you can't show me a man alive who didn't have a team. Mm-hmm. The man alive that was great, mm-hmm. who didn't have a team behind him that made him great. No, nah, you're right. And, and you, to, to further that, like I didn't know when I, was, when I was young, you know, you always see a Martin Luther King drive in every, in every city. Yeah. But you know, you got Ralph David Abernathy. Right. You know what I mean? You got all those guys who was there along the way helping him and, you know, and, and maturing him to the leader, the great leader he, he ended up being. And I, I, I'm, I think it's the same way with, with Malcolm or yeah. any other great leader, yeah. Farrakhan as well. It's like he, he has to have great men around all him the time to be able to have that that intellect and that balance and that sense of discerning to be able to be like, okay, this is the consensus of, right. you know, what and we're- And oftentimes being wiser is. than you. Mm, right. You understand me? Because that's how you pull from so you don't make certain mistakes. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it's like, you go to this person to consult and you may just happen to be the person who is more charismatic, mm-hmm. who is better at speaking, who is a better face for the movement, who has more presence. Mm-hmm. But the mind behind you are the men and women that you, insulate yourself with right, right and so you are one of those people that if you want a particular level of greatness have this person a part of that energy have this person a part of that frequency right he's going to help bring out that within you yes that yes. exists because that's what teachers are supposed to do bring mm-hmm. that out within not tell you everything and then tell you to remember what i said right, right a right. great teacher going to leave gaps so you go on a journey to learn mm-hmm. so you develop experience over time yes you yes. understand me absolutely so I want to get into the album a little bit. Mm-hmm. EGOT, right? Mm-hmm. What does it stand for? Emmy, Grammy? EGOT means Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, Tony. It's Oscar, the, Grammy, Tony. It's the, tri- it's the tr- I would say like the triple crown or yeah. quadruple crown of entertainment. When you, you come know? with uh, EGOT or mm-hmm. GOAT, because uh, you got to be a GOAT yeah, if you yeah, get yeah. all You know what's crazy? When you said that, everybody be like, the EGOAT. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, that's that's me too. That's me too, the EGOAT as well. But I think um, it was something that, as a kid, I was just very inquisitive and I was very uh, active in arts. You yeah. know what I mean? As far as uh, stage plays, as far as, you know, singing in the choir, singing in, in the band, playing in the band. Um, 
dancing, rapping. It was just everything I was just doing for as entertainment. And it kind of, I kind of shut it off when, you know, when you get in the streets, it ain't, it ain't about that. It's like, man, get to it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you kind of, you know, you know, put that, that side of you on mute. But like I said, when I, when I had my accident and my revelation was like, yo, I need to show all sides of me and really, you know, take it serious on, you know, what I want to do in life now. And a lot of time I gave a lot of my time to other people, you know what I mean? Just helping them get to where they get to in life mm -hmm. and didn't take that time with myself. So I think this is what I want to express to the world through film, through uh, uh, acting, through, you know, theater, all, all different uh, walks of life and entertainment. And that's why it's called the story of E-Guy. So that's really What's one of your best it. bars on the album? Um, or your favorite, not best? Man, oh, I got so many. <sighs> like, what's one you think kind of sum up the feeling? Well, the uh, first uh, line uh, is like, that? they asked me what's the E-Guy. It's like a movie Spike Lee shot. Hit boy and Ye should do the beat chops. The drums got to swing, man. They got to have that peep rock. John mm. Legend on the keys. I'm trying to get what he got. Whoopi Goldberg said that I should get what she got. If I get the Pulitzer, that means I get the P got. Mm. You know what I mean? So yeah. it was like, it was just like yeah. going crazy. But I think. Ooh, the P got. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's just me just really yeah. elaborating on, you know, what I want my career to go and how, how I want to present myself to the world as a as not only a writer, a screenwriter, a and a, a CEO, mm. you know what I mean? I'm getting yeah. to that level in life where I feel like I've learned enough throughout the music industry and throughout my life to be able to convey my message in, in so many different ways. You know, it made me think when the Kanye West Genius documentary came out, mm -hmm. Cootie was able to be seen from being a person that captured a lot of that and it kind of brought like filmmakers and videographers into the forefront to be like, yo, these are the guys that make the magic. Without them, we don't get to appreciate nothing of what we actually see. Right, right, right. You understand mm -hmm. me? And that, I think, is like kind of a perfect comparison to you being behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. But that industry not having this Cody moment yet. Right, You right, understand right, me? Right, <laughs> And I think, I think that's, that's, that's dope uh, that you say that. Um, the people behind the scenes are very important and, and it's good to highlight someone like me because a lot of kids think they got to be the right. main guy in front of the camera. Yeah. And there's people behind the camera, on the side yeah. of the camera, handling the legal side, yeah. helping with the writing, helping with harmonies, helping with fashion. Yeah. So just because you want to be in the music industry don't mean you have to be the rapper. You can be, right. it's, a, it's a lot of jobs that need to be filled right. in. You know, management, role manager, security, Whatever you, you feel like you bring to the table is good. And not just in rap, in any industry, right. you know what I mean? You have, I didn't, I didn't realize what a consultant was until I started getting paid to consult. Mm. You know what I mean? Like You get paid to consult, how does this work? Well, you know, Kanye is just revolutionary. So I'm not, I'm not on paper as a writer. Mm. I'm on paper as a consultant. There we, that's what I like. You hip hop yeah. consultant, man. Yeah, you a rap yeah. consult. That's actually raw. Yeah, so I consult. Yeah, high him level with consultant, his, no, not a regular. Yeah, high yeah, level high consultant. level. Yeah, this is billionaire yeah. consultant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> consultant, but you know, that's that. Those are things that I never even opened my mind to. But I think that's he's just a trailblazer for a lot of things in our culture. And, you know, I think sometimes we have to protect him because. You know, people look at it, people may have their own opinion mm. about him, but he's given us alternate ways of handling ourselves as men. Like, right. a lot of times, the only thing we can do is hold it in or act out in violence. Right. We can't Express pray it. online. We can't cry about abortion. We can't do these right. things because right. it's not in our, you know, masculinity structure that they got us in in our community. Have a problem with your little swimmers? Have a problem with your testosterone? Not feeling quite like a man when you go into the gym? Can not go in there and exert maximum energy, falling off? How about you try and tap into some of the sports moths? Specially formulated so you can feel like a man again. You can tap in high endurance, and at the same time, it's a very small recovery rate because of what's inside this bottle right here tapped in for the man inside you. Now we know 
Toxic masculinity is the new trending topic. But what about healthy masculinity, goddammit? What if I told you inside this bottle is a little bit of healthy masculinity? Would you take it? Make sure you tap in. Get you a little bit. Nah, uh, and, and I think it's funny because Kanye West still comes off as masculine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Number one, I think because, number one, masculinity likes wins. Mm -hmm. When we see anybody who's won as much as Kanye West, it's very hard to effeminate Kanye West. Right, right, right. He's a billionaire, number one. Mm -hmm. Once you become Billy in our court, right, right. You, yeah, you can't you do did. no wrong. Yeah, first absolutely. Of all. You absolutely. understand me? You done got to the position that every person has had in their greatest imagination. I want to be mm -hmm. a billionaire. Mm -hmm. You made it there. Mm -hmm. But Kanye West also represents a revolutionary, an activist, mm -hmm. a poet, right. an artist, a screenwriter, like mm -hmm. all of these different hyphens mm -hmm. you understand me that's Kanye West and he's also has a talent for being surrounded by some of the most talented people mm -hmm. in the world mm -hmm. and that says something to how you you know comprise yourself mm -hmm. and what builds you in your environment right and understanding like if we're going to make this certain vibration we need to go to this island we need to mm -hmm. go over here mm -hmm. and that's where we go get the frequency at right right, right? and what's what's one of your greatest stories with Kanye West Man, I have so many, bro. Like, like what was a moment where you was like, man, this this actually made me see you different. This really touched me. Man, um, shoot, when he, I mean, it's so many of them. But you know, I would say how he treats his kids and how he treats his employees. Like, I I, I say this, he will have three hundred employees and know everybody by their first and last name and know their kids and, you know what I mean, be able to unlock from what, all the mm. stuff he got going on. Yeah. Because re you really think, you don't know if he care, you don't really care about you because you might right. be this dude in the corner just sewing a t-shirt yeah. and he only sees you, you know, once every six months, but he'll come talk to you and bring up something that you never thought he knew right, about right. you, you That's know what I'm powerful. saying? So I think just coming off that throne and being able to be human is my biggest you know, take away from him. Or maybe that is the throne itself. And right. why people love him because the, mu the music talks to you as if he knows you sometimes. Mm -hmm. Because he puts in analogies of things that you're going to be going through in your life right. to connect to. Mm -hmm. You understand me? And I think that that's powerful. Uh, and what is something that you, you kind of like, have y'all ever battled before? Uh, no. Nah. He always say, <laughs> well, the first thing he said, man, he was like, man, I would not want to battle Saha, but, yeah. you know, if I had to, you know, I'm gonna bring the, you know, bring the flames. Yeah. But, no, nah, we never battled. I think the only person I ever battled was like Big Sean. Okay. How you did know that what I'm go? Early on. I mean, it went, it went, you know, <laughs> you know, I, I would let the world, you know, say it, but I think it was at Double XL when I first got there. It was yeah. Like, yeah. He was like, man, rap for these people, rap for these people. And I think Big Sean was there and he, he couldn't take it no more. <laughs> yeah. He was like, I can't take this dude going crazy like yeah. this. So he jumps off the table and he gets to rapping and we get, I go back and forth. So I don't think we ever like really like set up battle for battle, but right, it has right. been moments Well, where, you know, just like the height and y'all in the studio. Yeah, and yeah. man, you feel me? man, still yeah. shopping still, yeah. yeah. Now you so, heard some of my raps before, man. Yeah, how, I love it. That's why I told you, you. How would you rate some of these bars, though? <laughs> how would you rate some of these nah, bars? Nah, bro. I think I think you're you you're in an interesting position, bro. <laughs> like I really, when I heard you rap, I heard you freestyle in the car one time. <laughs> yeah. Stand up like a god, people talk a whole lot. Came in person, that's why I've been learning from Elijah. Then I learned from Farrakhan. Make sure I'm Muslim dying. Tell me, against us, dog, we just not offenses. We just not defenses. It's time for us to go get it. When we was little kids, we were jumping over the fences, running from the police. We were stuck in them trenches. They ain't understand, dog. We ain't care about religion. We was out there tripping, dog. We was out there slipping. Ain't nobody gave us no game, put us on mission. So we was out there banging each other, stuck in division huh Cause ain't nobody told us and i to told you like, like man you might want to get yeah. in the studio you know what i mean yeah, and then i, I heard people. i seen a video you shot in uh was that in africa yeah he was rapping yeah that was in front of the pyramid yeah. yeah i was like see that's what we don't have that representation that's a fact so i think that's a lane that you can just yeah. go and take that up through there so i think if you you know what i mean you know getting in the studio right production making sure you you know how do you really uh, put in a song format? 
Because mm. a lot of times it's just, when I hear you, it's like, man, these are just thoughts that I'm, right. you, know, you know, I'm going at. But I think once mm. you get in there with some real producers and songwriters that kind of say, okay, we're going to stop right here. We're going to put this hook right here. We're mm. going gonna to break the beat down right here and let it be emotional with the strings yeah. and then build you back up into it. It might be some spoken word. Yeah. Those type of things, when you start making a project, You'll be on your way. The composer, man. Yeah, yeah. The consultant right here. Yeah, the you got the look. You, you know what I mean? You already, you there. Yeah. You see, got the look, fan look, base. Look, so. look, man. I got my cosign. Absolutely. I'm ready to go. I, no, absolutely. But I, I could see. So, like, as you was talking to me, I'm like, all right, this is how this brother composes. Mm -hmm. Because even the art form of rap, I think people don't really appreciate mm -hmm. because the art that goes into making a, a rap song mm -hmm. after people hear it is different, right? Mm -hmm. But like, yo, let's put these strings here. Let's make this emotional. Let's stop here. Let's tweak this. Let's say that. Like, mm -hmm. that's composing. Right, right, right. Right? But I think rap is probably the greatest musical art form to exist because I also think it's the hardest. Mm -hmm. You understand I me? Mean, we got so many different forms from freestyle to writing to bebop to all of that other extra Mel stuff. Melodic, Mel yeah. Melodic, like, it, this new f mumble rap hey, to... You, you say that Ye thinks mumble rap is is a vibration thing. Yeah. He's like, see, you know, it is. you can feel him versus using articulate. Like, he always say the Webster Dictionary is, is too too much. It's too right. advanced. Sometimes our thing, our communication is through feel, through, right. through mumble, through emotion, through harmony. You know what I mean? So it's when you're really using your voice as another instrument. Exactly. On exactly. top of what's already produced on the beat, mm -hmm. now you becoming another instrument to add in there yeah. where a person just gets the vibe to. You know, uh, mm -hmm. Dr. Wesley, I like to quote Dr. Wesley because that's one of, uh, I'm going to have him on the show. We ain't did the high level yet. Mm. But he talks about the phantom frequency. Mm. And the phantom frequency is talking about like the 808s, mm. right? And that energy you get when that 808 is in there, mm -hmm. right? And sometimes, and like trap music, that 808 puts you in like that heightened state. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Like it really puts some people on demon time. Right, right. Because that music originally utilized in like Africa was for certain trance states of consciousness, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? To put people in certain states and that same energy is put into certain music at different hertz and certain frequencies. Mm -hmm. When it comes to music, do y'all get into the science of it like that? Absolutely. Um... It's the it's a Ye Ye spoke about that about the 808 affecting this, a certain chakra. Yeah. You know I'm saying the 808, the 808 exists in the lowest chakra of your body. The majority of content that's related to the 808 is killer or sexual content. The original 808s was even off pitch, so that meant it's an actual sound in the track that you don't realize is there. That is fucking up your you entire are. frequency. Right. Yeah. Because you feel like, you know, when you, when you hear that 808, it's really a warrior drone. Absolutely. It's really that when, doom, 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 doom. it's like heartbeat. when you go in the war, it's like rolling. getting you, yeah. you aroused, getting you, you know, ready to protect your tribe or whatever. And um, like, even when you think about, you know, I know this is not a good thing to speak on, but when you think about how you know, the Germans use brown sound as a certain mm. way of uh, torturing people and yeah. different things. So sound is something that is just as valuable. You said brown sound. Brown sound. Explain that one. So brown sound was something that they used in the camps where it would make you vomit or make okay, you, yeah. you know, use the bathroom on yeah. yourself. And that was a form of torture, but they used it a sound to actually do right. that versus something physical. Yeah. So that's what he, he was just saying, like, that's how sound can right. affect your the, body the, without you. I Even think, when you see like, it's this thing where you put sand, I forget what it is. Um, like the somatics uh, where you can, I know exactly yeah, what you're Yeah, it makes about. pictures, like it yeah. makes shapes and different things. So sound is yeah, very- Yeah, vibration shapes, everything is attuned to a certain vibration. Right. right? Every single thing. Right. And to your, I, Dr. Wesley called it the weaponization of frequency. Mm. You understand me? And that it's, it's, it's that's what's entrained into the music mm -hmm. so that when you are listening to music at certain frequencies, it gets you high intense stress or it increases cortisol levels or increases testosterone. Mm -hmm. or So after you do that and you go talk to somebody, you, you, your energy up. Like right, when right. you go to the gym, you listen to certain music because you want it to get your energy, energy up, up. Exactly. right? And so music is powerful. Most people listen to music more than they listen to anything else in their life. So yes. like that frequency, is the most frequent thing you hear. So that's what's trapped into your body. Like, 
we all 70 to 90 percent water. Mm -hmm. So when you talked about you know, um, frequencies being able to change the shape of things. Mm -hmm. That's what it does within the body. It changes the shape and the mm. vibration and the frequency that you own. And if you listen to that nonstop, 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 mm. that's what you become. Right. That's right. why at certain points in time, you just hear a lyric in your head. Like mm -hmm. it's somewhere in your frequency. Yeah, somewhere in your subconscious that you like, man, where does that come from? Right. Man? But our bodies trap it because of the, the structure of water within our bodies. We trap mm. frequency within our protons within our bodies. Mm. So it's like you can measure a person disease frequency or there are certain doctors trying to figure out how do they create a cure frequency mm. so people listen to sound bowls and trying to tune themselves or yeah. the CIA had a program with the gateway tapes they called it uh, hemisync mm. so they'll try to sync your brain to the left hemisphere to the right hemisphere to uh, have both of them in sync at the same time rather than just one right. right so from like gamma to like theta to delta there's all of these different states and gamma is like 40 hertz where you at the height and frequency. Right. So like if you putting that in the music and you talking about something you want people to be attentive to, mm -hmm. then now they on that frequency as they're listening. Right, right. Right? And like this is, there was a time where hip hop switched from like 440 to 432, mm -hmm. where it was like a loving frequency, to then it was like, you know, murder, death, killing right. type shit. Right. Right? And so like the, the power that goes into the producer, the producer literally has the ability to control the frequency of the world. Mm -hmm. And then the rapper hears the song and it's certain type of, when you hear certain, you know, beats, right, you right. gonna say certain things. That's why, that's why, you know, it's deep because uh, the trap drum is, is, is that versus like when you hear a natural hi-hat or natural mm -hmm. boom bap from back yeah. in the day, it didn't give them that nah. aggressive, yeah. so they would give you more of a, a conscious or yeah. a more of an uplifting spirit. And that's something I, was, I did on my album as well, playing with those, the darkness and lightness mm. of the drums, the hi-hats, you know. What's your, what, I, it's hard to say favorite, but mm. what was the song when you, when you finished it was like, they gonna love this one. Oh man, I got, a, I got a few of them, but I got this song called Celebrate that I really, that I love. Um, I got another record called Lucifer that's that's gonna change the mind of people. Mm. You know what I mean? How how I have this conversation with them. So it's it's different things on my album. Like I broke it up into the Emmys. It feels more like sitcomish, where it's you know has a lot of old '70s samples. I got the Grammy section that sounds big and grand, like you know yeah. Grammy music. Then I have the Oscar section mm. that's very cinematic. Oh, that's you know what I mean? Very mystique-ish. And my Tony section is, you know, spoken word, monologue, yeah. freestyle kind of rap. Yeah. So it just comes together and it's, it's a great collage of music. And I, kind of, I broke it down in that way. So when you're listening to it, you'll definitely be able to hear that in the music as well. Yeah. You know, they say Beethoven was, you know, a, a, a more, and he was a dark-skinned, melanated man. Mm. And so music is, it's in our soul. Like, mm. we create the greatest. We are the composers. You right, understand right. me? Like, that's something that we've used throughout culture, antiquity, and time. Music is the great connector of all people. Music mm -hmm. is like math. You understand right, me? No right. matter what language you speak, if you understand math, y'all speak the same language. Like, right. The mathematical language of the universe. Mm -hmm. And then it's like energy, vibration, frequency. That's what's in music. Mm -hmm. And that's what, like, you know, Nikolai Tesla talked about, mm -hmm. right? That, uh, that rhythmatic frequency saying that if you understand this, you understand everything about the world. Mm. So rappers, literally, the, the reason hip hop has become so great is because you control the energy, the frequency, the vibration mm -hmm. of the world. world and you right. take that and you shift that out all around the world and have people on the same vibration and frequency. Mm -hmm. There's no other product on the planet Earth that does that. Right. You understand right. me? And you can, and it's like art where when you look at an art, everybody can get a different perspective. Mm -hmm. Something that maybe the artist never even thought of. Right, and I get that a lot of times. <laughs> People be like, man, this line meant this. I'll be like, it didn't mean that, yeah. but if that's what you felt like, yeah. you meant, okay, cool. So, But do you think, yeah. so the intuition of creating greatness, when it comes to being able to pull things from like just the universe, mm -hmm. 
how much of it you feel like you just streaming where it's just like, I don't know how I came up with that. Because when I freestyle, people mm. would be like, yo, how do you think? And I'm like, it's really the art of not thinking. Right, you understand right, me? It's right. the art of letting it just flow through you. Mm-hmm. And then, because there's no way that I could review the lines, order them, say it, make it make sense, rhyme at the same time. Mm-hmm. But you just tapped in. Man, I, I think it's just something where... I just picked up over time because I, I couldn't even listen to rap growing up. So mm. when I got into it, it was just, a, I got into it as a student. Mm. You know what I mean? So I started listening to my favorite rappers and kind of figured out the stanzas and, you know, the cadences they were using. And then found out, I tried to find what cadence comes natural to me. And once I found that the natural cadence of myself, uh, that's when I came prolific. And I felt like, you know, as an artist myself, it just became easier to remember and easier to recite because it was in my DNA. It was yeah. my style. It was my my own, you know, rhythm, yeah. my own drums. So I think that's where it comes from. And, and a lot of people, us as, you know, black people, we all have that form of rhythm in us. It's just how do we utilize it? Some people dance, some people sing, some people rap. You know what I mean? Some people, I know people who kind of, my producers are, are giving a certain kind of information just through mm-hmm. the beats and the samples that they use and where they champ chopping and what instrument they put on top of it. So I think all those things in music is, you know, that's why, you know, the devil was the devil, <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Cause we had to kick him out, but um, he was just, he was just, you know, prolific and they knew that music is the one thing that kind of gives off that vibration. And, yeah in the soul, like you said, it's, it's different than light, it's different than it's the you smell, it's different than anything. You can actually feel something. And they're using that like even with cell phones. Yeah. Like how do we have cell phones? It's like, it's the vibration yeah. through yeah. The, 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 uh, the frequency. So I think all those things in a nutshell kind of yeah. gives that that same vibe and, and that, I keep saying vibe, but vibration. That's what it is. And music. Minister Farrakhan you know I mean? said that a, a rap song is more powerful than a thousand speeches. Mm. You understand me? And when you think about it, that's very true. Like, that's why you will see like a, a Gary V or a Grant Cardone wanting to get mm. close to hip hop because they know that it can ship and take their brand all throughout the world. Right, right. Like, hip hop holds so much leverage and I wish we would hold more leverage sometimes mm-hmm. because sometimes we don't realize that we the bad, we the most powerful mm-hmm. thing. Like we hold all the value that if we don't mm-hmm. let you in, you can't come in so we can right. put a price on that leverage. Right, right, but right. But we haven't unionized hip hop in that way to be like, yo, let's charge yeah. this rate. Right, right. Matter of fact, let's charge the record label for even getting a rapper. Right. You understand me? Like, you can flip the game on his heads because if you are a trillion dollar export as a product mm-hmm. and you decide to say, you know what? If we're going to allow certain media to get access to hip hop, certain, you know, people that's outside the culture to get, we're going to always charge. Right. And then y'all got to put it in this pot. You understand mm-hmm. me? Like, it, 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 it behooves me that we create gold, we create diamonds, we create you know, just the most valuable things on the planet Earth, and then we freely give them away for trinkets. Right, you understand right, me? Right. And not realizing nobody ever taught us that, yo, in the words of my brother Derek Grace, they need us, we don't need them. Mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. and when you really understand it, like, you know, you, you hit me and say, like, I want you to be a part of my press run. Mm-hmm. That's how it make this thing work. Right, right, You understand right. me? Like, when we want to create more powerful media outlets, mm-hmm. all we got to do is, Let's go do an interview with them. Mm-hmm. Now we can boost up their platform. Right. Now we ain't got to wait to do an interview with somebody outside the courtyard because mm-hmm. this is going to give me the exact same look. Mm-hmm. It's going to give me the exact same views or whatever mm-hmm. that this one would have. But this takes me a whole lot more hoops to get in. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and and that's, that's, a, that's a great thing. That's why I was like, we got to have this, con- this high level conversation on the press run because it's, a lot of artists need to come in here and just actually have that conversation yeah. because it gives I, you a different audience yeah. too. Yeah, that too. And I think it gives them uh, education. That's why I was like, my favorite young rapper is Kodak. So that's why I was yeah. like, I would love now, for would you love to be to able sit to down. Kodak, sit down know, with him. Whatever you know what it saying? is. What, what Kendrick say, I'm, I, I'm not pro back, I'm more Kodak black. That yeah. was it. A- <laughs> Yes. Yeah, so. You know, I was listening. Somebody was saying that they didn't like Kodak on the album. I was like, you tripping, you man. Tripping. She, she's sly. Because he got a level to where it's like, yo, this is different the way he put this together. Yeah. He flowed on that yeah, one. So. Especially if you rap, do you know how hard that is to right, do? Right, right, right. Everybody can't just emulate 
a Kodak Black mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. you have to, your mind has to be jumping gymnastics to put it together in a certain capacity. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, but I definitely appreciate you coming here, man. That, yeah, that's powerful. Bro. It says a lot. Mm -hmm. So you from Stone Mountain? Yeah, Stone Mountain Decatur area. Yeah. Atlanta, of course, took over the world when it comes to hip hop. Everybody know that. Mm -hmm. I just ran recently into Andre 3000. I was talking to him about high level conversations mm -hmm. at my bro Idris and do a product release. Mm -hmm. um, he releasing some, some Web3 wearable technology, you know, mm -hmm. and he was the one who did like the smart store for Nipsey Hussle and things of that nature. Mm, okay. And we plan on doing a high level conversation. One of the smartest young men you ever go meet. Like he mm -hmm. builds hardware and software for like, he, he, he worked on the um, the uh, explore screen for Instagram, like, he, mm, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Like the, the the goggles for Snapchat and all a bunch of other different companies, mm -hmm. you know. He actually designed for Kanye West okay. as well. Um, AR stuff and things of that nature for okay. Rihanna, partnered with Jay-Z with the Marcy Ventures. But anyway, that was just a plug for my young brother. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like killing the game, <laughs> you <sure>. know. <laughs> but when it comes to Atlanta, who is your Mount Rushmore in Atlanta? Now or just all time? All time. All time, then now. Well, my all time is Three Stacks, T.I., uh, Jeezy, and I would probably say, hmm. Now, I, I, I have to put Big Boy in there. Big boy. Yeah, like you, I've only put outcasts together. And yeah. Then, you know what I'm saying? Big boy is under under underrated. Yeah. You understand me? Yeah. So now and future, I would say future. Okay. Future be my four. Okay. My four. Future before big boy or after? Uh yeah, I'll put you on the spot. Before. I played before. Cause he, he had a bigger impact, I feel like. Yeah. So now. Now my my rush mode would be 21. Mm. Uh Gunna, mm. Gunna's like one of my favorite. Uh, uh, I just said future. I can't put future in there. You can still put future. Yeah, in there. I can put future. That's all new, time yeah. and new. Yeah, future in the new. You've been doing too. it for a while. And shoot, um, man, one of my favorite groups growing up. A lot of people might not know him was a damn shame. Mm. So that was like one of my, you know. Oh no. I would say one out of time too is Pastor Troy. Pastor Troy. Pastor Troy was like, yeah. growing up was like, yeah. Like you can, we could never finish a club. Like when he came in, it was just like he won song and the club yeah. gets shut down. So okay. I think those are the legends of Atlanta, you know what I mean? Outside of myself, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's why I would see, consider like that, that, that level of Mount Rushmore. And when you say Stone Mountain, a lot of people don't know. The uh, reason why Atlanta is so great like that because Stone Mountain is a large piece of granite mm -hmm. and it, it travels all the way through the city and Atlanta is on top of like one of the largest pieces of granite in America. That's a fact. And what it is is that when that sun hit that, that yeah. granite, the vibration off the ground yeah. and off, off the people, it kind of translates. And I was doing some studying that um, it, it goes all the way back to Egypt. Mm. I, I haven't all the way studied it, but it's pieces of rock where it's like, uh, I guess it's in a certain angle, a yeah. certain, you know, trajectory of, you know how the pyramids are lined up with yeah. a lot of different- uh, The stars. Yeah, stars and, you know, the stars and different things like that. So I've been getting into it more. Um, and that's why the KKK was founded there. The, the, yeah. And they got the damn Confederate I'm monuments. I'm from where the KKK was founded. Yeah. For sure. Which is crazy. <laughs> you know, crazy. Atlanta has such a deep. Killer Mike had sent me something about culture the other day um, because I had talked about, you know, creating a new culture. Mm -hmm. And um, he had sent me a video of him talking about how Atlanta has always had a culture before hip hop. There was niggas with mm -hmm. money, basically. And they've been moving and shaking and making things happen. Mm -hmm. And why do you think, well, I guess that's part of it, you understand me? But Atlanta, there was Marcus Garvey came through Atlanta, Martin Luther King, mm -hmm. Malcolm X, everybody came through Atlanta. Why do mm -hmm. you think Atlanta just is such a powerful place? It's really underrated. Mm, yeah. Now it's known as like this black mecca, but yeah. Atlanta has always had a deep, powerful, rich black history. I mean, um, I think it was you know, it's a pros and cons because, you know, General Sherman came down and burned down the whole Atlanta. Mm. You know what I mean? So we had to rebuild it. And 
by rebuilding it, it came jobs, it came opportunity, it came land, mm -hmm. you know, where, you know, everything was destroyed. If you look at like a lot of the East Coast or like if you go to Philly, a lot of them buildings are still up from yeah. 1800s, you know what I mean? So I think the fact that we had to rebuild the city mm. is what, what really brought that, that, that melting pot of people from everywhere. We had, it was a smaller city, it was burned down and you know, it was a place where a lot of blacks moved to get work and like my parents, my parents from uh, upstate New York. So uh, that's why they moved out there for opportunity. And I think that's, that's what kind of got us in that melting pot of, you know, different, you know, African-Americans coming from everywhere and all nationalities in that, but definitely black people just migrated there for work. Yeah. And the city has just built, now it's like, crowded. There's <laughs> like too many of us there. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of people in Atlanta. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I think that's the biggest thing, man. Um, I appreciate the city a lot. Uh, it has brought a lot to me, gave me a lot of culture. And I think that's the thing with a lot of the young kids. And that's why the city is so, you know, vibrant right now. Right. Peace Family 19 Keys tapping in with you. Um, I want to tell you why you need to tap into the infinite wealth strategies. Number one, there's a lot of millionaires being brought every single day, right? The job market is devastated, you understand me? Um, you can go to college, but it's better to get you a skill. I've had several six-figure days in the market trading, right? Cryptocurrency. And at the time, I had little knowledge, right? I've sold an NFT, which was just a digital picture rendering for over $16,000. But why? Because I understood the market and I knew the value of it. I've sold thousands of books you understand me on my e-commerce platform, utilizing my strategies that I teach inside the infinite wealth strategy. But I also have a beautiful community of people all around the world assisting, providing information, resources, and links, because I know that it's harder to learn by yourself, but it's better to learn in a community sense. When you join Infinite Wealth Strategies, you too can become a part of a community of people learning together and earning together. Make sure you tap in because it's the education that you need in order to succeed and build wealth. Don't be on the outside. Tap in. Infinite Wealth Strategies. And the last thing I want to ask you about is Web3. In the sense of, and I'm not sure if you, you dived into it whatsoever, mm -hmm. but you know, nowadays, a lot of artists talk about being independent, mm -hmm. right? Um, and Web3 more so goes about how people use the internet rather than it being a thing, mm -hmm. um, because it's the new, it's the future right, right, of right. the internet. And people being able to essentially cut out middlemen, own their own data, right? And go directly to customers, you right. understand me, themselves, they become the source. And so, you know, you see artists like Snoop, uh, I know Tory Lanez did something with an NFT album. Mm -hmm. Are you exploring anything in the Web3 space? Oh yeah, I, absolutely. I'm, um, I just got on top of it, like to really, cause I didn't, I didn't know what an NFT was. I yeah. didn't know how to really, you know, convey it to my fans, but I've been doing a lot of research on it and we do have some things that we're, uh, we're putting together. We, I have different characters I'm coming up with uh, that actually do music mm. in the NFT world. So. That's fire. That's what we're coming up with now. So Web3 is something that is very impactful. I think it's at an early stage. Yeah. And if we get on top of it now, you know, it's going to be, because everything is going to go virtual. Yeah. So I think that's the, uh, the biggest plus about that, especially with music. Absolutely. I think um, artists um, and rappers have the greatest opportunity to utilize the Web3 space. You have mm -hmm. community, you have culture, you got product, right. you got fan base. And if you have a vertical to be able to directly create communities, mm -hmm. take your music and monetize it without any middleman, mm -hmm. that's where you see billionaires being able to be created, okay. right? Whether it's the Drakes, whether it's the Jay-Z's, whether it's Sci-Hi the Prince, mm -hmm. whether whoever it is, I think that now you can take the condensed amount of people that you have mm -hmm. and you can start playing by the numbers. You right. understand me? Snoop made millions off of a single mm -hmm. that wouldn't have broken, made that much money in any other traditional markets. Mm -hmm. So it's like once you see a signal for something like that, that's when you have to jump in early. Mm -hmm. And for the most part, I think what scares people is the education around it. Right. But all you got to do is take your money and hire a team that understands it. Right, right. Now they have something that's going to be new called SBTs, which is soul bound tokens. And soul bound tokens, because I think that the easiest identification to understand NFTs is like if I took a picture right now and I sent it to your phone, 
that picture is no longer in my phone. Now it's only in your phone, right? right. So it's transferred from one place to another. Right. And that's what gives it value that it's not a double system. Or if I create two and I send it to two people, it's out of my phone and it's in yours. And everything mm -hmm. becomes like a, a wallet that holds things until it's in another place. Mm -hmm. But the soul bow token says that if I send it to you, it's yours forever. You can't mm -hmm. send it, can't transfer, can't do nothing. Mm -hmm. So now these become the new degrees, the new IDs, right? Imagine if you want to create an album and you only want to make one of them. Now, whoever buys that, whoever I send it to, if I send it to your wallet, it's yours forever. Mm -hmm. The only way you can transfer that to somebody else is you literally have to give them keys to your wallet, which means that they now have the access codes to it. Mm -hmm. Or you can put it on a physical wallet and then you can give that to somebody. Mm -hmm. And number one, it gives a, a different level of rarity and value to items that mm -hmm. you can create digitally. Mm -hmm. How many songs do you have that you just never put out and really don't have any plans of putting out? Over four or five hundred. <laughs> so I'm saying. So imagine if you know you sold each one of those for a thousand dollars. Now, just on a simpler level, that's half a million dollars, mm -hmm. right? But you would imagine people may even want to spend more of that because right. you can give them intellectual rights to it to say that, or commercial rights to it to say that I'm gonna sell it to you, mm -hmm. and then I'm gonna license it out to you, and I'm gonna let you do what you want to do with it. Mm -hmm. So now you can sell it to studios, you can put it on an album, you can put a feature on it, but you mm -hmm. on the back end will get a percentage of royalty for anything that they do. Mm -hmm. So now you selling it to the world and letting them work for you as you created the content. Mm -hmm. And then you get paid royalty on the content that you created. Right. You understand me? So you got 500 songs, you probably don't even need to do features. I'm pretty sure there's many people who would love to, but you, you can build your own NFT marketplace, which is super simple. I think the problem is people think this stuff is complicated. No, it's not. <laughs> you hire a team and they like, bro, I'll do that for you fast. Mm -hmm. Right now, somebody that's a fan of yours is in Web3 and would love to work for you. Right. Because I was talking to my bro, Him500, and we agreed that everybody needs a CTO, a chief technology officer. Mm -hmm. in, in every business, every brand that you have, you got to have a CTO. Mm -hmm. Because now you're leaving so much money on the table and you're working harder, when the reality of it is now it's about working smarter, smarter and more creative. Right. The creative workers. Because look, I always say the smartest people created everything. Now, the creative people show you how to use everything right. in the best ways possible. They say, uh, Steve Jobs said, <laughs> He said, and I give the, the laziest person the hardest job because they're going to figure out the easiest that's way a, to do that's it. That's a super fact. <laughs> that's so, a super yeah. fact. But yeah, well, I my appreciate brother, that, bro. This has been a definitely powerful um, conversation, and I appreciate you coming. Appreciate you. understand you, me? Um, you being a consultant for the culture. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Um, bringing out the best in the culture and also bringing out the best in yourself. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you're still here to have this conversation. Yes. Because, unfortunately... The streets, hip hop, or the world don't value black men until they gone. Right. You understand me? So I want to give you your flowers while you're living and your appreciation, my, my brother. It's one of the goats. Peace, God. Yes, sir. High level. This has been a high level conversation. Make sure y'all tap in. You Peace. chill. 19 keys. This is high level conversation. Tap in with the God. Um, well, being on 19 Keys High Level Conversation, I think I learned a lot. You know, to learn, to listen is the best. You know, usually um, when you go do interviews and different things, you know, you do most of the talking and you kind of educate the people. But today I felt like I was educated on a lot of different things. So I appreciate that. First of all, it, it, it was dope having Sai High the Prince on, man. I think Sai High is somebody who has his thumb on the culture a person who's behind the scenes. Um, as he says, it, he's a consultant, a high level consultant, you know, in, in the circles of the streets, man, we know that as a ghostwriter. Um, and I don't think ghostwriter is powerful enough word because basically he was saying that he does more than just ghostwrite. Like he's going in there and writing your lyrics and that's it. No, it's like he's bringing the energy, he's bringing things out and composing, right? Um, and I think that that's powerful because you can attribute some of your favorite songs from Travis Scott to Kanye West to a bunch of other different people. And if it wasn't for this man, then we wouldn't get certain sounds. We wouldn't get certain songs that we all love today. So I think it's good to bring the architects of the culture in as well. And we talked about everything from frequencies to vibrations, you know, to the culture, to, you know, um, understanding the PTSD that happens and the world, why hip hop is the way that it is. And we kind of went deep on even the African drum systems and how that correlate 
you know, and spoke about his relationship with Kanye West and a multitude of different things. Um, and I think that the brother is highly intelligent, highly in tune with himself, and he has a special ability that only 1% of the planet, or less than 1% of the planet Earth has, you know, and that's the ability to not only make hits um, and make great music, right? Because he has the ability to make hits for other people, right? And by making them, I mean like helping compose and bring that out to where we love that forever. And that's a legacy creator. I, I think God sent me here to be a servant. So I like to uh, help others and um, put my equity into the world. So uh, in a way I do think sometimes I do forget about myself, but um, that's just me being selfless and, you know, being a, a righteous man. But outside of that, I think this project kind of shows the importance of who I am and the importance of what I give to the culture and the game. I think from a production level, from a film level, from a, uh, a lyricist level, and also just the conceptual level of how I came up with the concepts and you can kind of see what I bring to the table with a lot of other artists. So I think that's, that's what this album would display. The, you know, music is frequencies, vibration is energy, right? At the core, artists and music are c composing symphonies and they're in training the mind, the body, the spirit, the whole vibration of the energy. And this can put people in different states of consciousness from higher to lower. It can make you excited, it can make you sad. It pulls on your strings of emotions. You understand me? And emotions is nothing but energy and motion, right? You think of a person in logic, they rise above emotions into just the logic and the rationality, but music allows you to go through the full expression. Right, and because we're water, the music has an effect on the vibration of who we are and we feel it at deepness in our core. And I think that there's a very powerful element to being able to compose music, to empathize and understand the listener, to be an observer, to embed intellect, and to be able to compose powerful frequencies that music, musicians, and artists are some of the most powerful people in the world for that reason. So having somebody like Sai High who is a cultural architect, composer, consultant, right? And what's known as a ghostwriter, I think is, was a high honor. And I look forward to listening to his album, uh, Inshallah, being on his album. Also, you know, I loved about this conversation is that, you know, the brother's very humble, uh, got a very good energy, great spirit, right? But at the same time, he's a high level genius. Um, and, you know, it's not always about the one man that you see in front, but it's about the energy and genius that's behind and that surrounds the people, that's on the side of the people. Because once you understand that, then you have the peace to understand how to create masterpieces, how great things are composed in the first place, right? And when you are an ingredient for a great dish, anytime you leave out that ingredient, then the dish is not as great, right? So uh, <laughs> I think Sai High is one of hip hop's greatest ingredients ever to exist. Hey, y'all know who it is, man. It's your boy, Saha the Prince, man. I just had a high-level conversation with my guy, 19 Keys. Peace to the God. Yes, sir. Slow down, you ain't even get to know me I know you see the flesh, but do you see the soul in me? I don't mean to brag, but I walk with a goal in me I'm not talking weather, I'm talking character I'm only 26, but they treat me like the OG Like I don't got enough time to be given just a moment My spirit feeling solely, my mind feeling holy I got a big caught, it almost overgrown me I know this is giving what it's supposed to give me. 
But I can only give what I'm supposed to give And I can only give when I'm here And I'm not always there, I'm keeping this real If I tell you my secrets, keep your lips sealed I'm not here to heal you, not here to build you Not here to fix you, not here to change you Not here to judge you, God will arrange you I'm here to paint, sprinkle my magic I'm here to change, boy, your blood like a lad Yeah, yeah, walk my own path and feed me When a lot asks me, I'm go give good deeds This is my charity, this the way I pray This the way I thank, this the way I repent Wait, my DNA activate again And I pray my heart is lighter than my sins Every good person is strong Every good person is strong Amen Every good person is a son Every good person is a shaman Every good person is a shaman Every good person is a shaman a lot of things you find when you go within A lot of things you gon' find when you find yourself There's no spirit in the sky that can heal your spirit No one is here to heal you Hide yourself and admire yourself Don't lie to yourself and remind yourself that you the greatest Every every day, baby, you the greatest Come on, say it with me, oh yeah, I'm the greatest Calling all the wolves, the kings, the queens, originals Calling all my brothers that standing on their principles Calling all my women that standing on their feminine Calling all the young guys that's out here in human Shout out to the Asiatic tribe, you winning this Shout out to the single mothers that ain't lost faith And ain't black men, knowing that we coming out the grave No, it's only up from here, we keep going this way Every good person is a shaman Every good person is a shaman Amen Every good person is a shaman 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 Baby It's one who guides you through wisdom It's guides you through the dark Bring you to the light Every good person is a shaman Talk to him A seance of economic science A black guy speaks truth amongst the quiet It's the waking of the sleep alliance Who will fail to kill the black messiahs The shaman's coming out the shadows Freedom from the slavery that was shadowed To the power of the mind The standard of the great divine The lost found giants are Asiatic forefathers Who saw more problems where they had the brain on gold water The mathematical logic of the crown of Elijah The Yaku fighters The flick the flame sage lighters The deep meditative guidance Out the epigenetic fire The school teachers who it reaches The FOI door to door final call bringers The ear who will listen to the griefer, the griefer, the tea leaf reader, astrology charters, black fathers, the ancestors, martyrs, to the ayahuasca smokers, geometric decoders, the message to the black man told us, the soldiers, the one who were chosen, the stomach and chest out, honorable, noble, Garvey, Farrakhan army, the devil, he can never ever charm me, harm me, I be all on a whole nother mission, trying to unify the God's vision, this is different, ain't no distance from heaven, we gon' have to make it is different, no reverence Tell me I told you all we need Is keep being good, the golden rule Cause every good person is a shaman That's the one thing that all guys have in common That's the one thing that all guys have in common Every good, every good deed is a shaman Family, listen, our episodes are doing amazing and I appreciate all of you all that have been tapping in, liking, subscribing, commenting, make sure that we are climbing up on the charts all of the time. We stay in the top 10. Um, but I also want you all to do me a favor. Right now we're looking for sponsors of high level conversations, right? Because we have open free discussions and we can go into any heights, we've reached 1.5 million, 300,000, 200,000, all of our episodes for the most part have hit all over 100 to 1.5 million range. And right now we want to get sponsored by the people. It's easy for us to go to corporations, but corporations come with corporate control, right? Because they may get scared that we say something free 
and speak however we want to. But I want it to be a system that if you love us, right, then support us. And it's that simple so we can continue to create and curate high level conversations that everybody need to hear. So make sure that you email us at High Level Media LLC if you want to become a sponsor. Tap in.